Like many young women, Gianna Barretta understood that God was calling her to marriage, and again, like many young women, she waited and prayed patiently for God to present her the man she was called to marry. That happy day came when, at age 33, she married Pietro Molla, an engineer a few years older than her. A few days before her wedding, she wrote her future husband saying, With God's help and blessing, we will cooperate with God to give him children who will love him and serve him. We will make our new little family a place where Jesus will reign over all. Gianna was a medical doctor who loved her little practice and she still managed to give some time to her patients, even after baby number one, two and three arrived in the first five years of her marriage. Early in the pregnancy of her fourth child, Gianna was diagnosed with a rare tumour on the walls of her uterus. Being a faithful Catholic, Gianna did not want any harm to be done to her little baby, because she knew this little child was a person who had the same right to life as her. Gianna Molla lived her marriage and her motherhood in a selfless way. She was a portrait of selfless love, selfless love for her husband, selfless love for her unborn child, and selfless love to God, whose holy will she accepted. Gianna lived a very saintly life, but tragically for her family, she died shortly after giving birth to her fourth child. Her last few hours were spent repeating the holy name of Jesus, saying, I love you, Jesus. I love you. Love is not selfish. That is what St. Paul tells us in our epistle today. As soon as selfishness enters into love, it poisons the relationship. It changes the relationship from one of mutual self-giving to one of use. The one you love is less of a person and more of a thing. I think we all find it easy to see and correct selfishness in a three-year-old who won't share his toys. But are we brave enough to look at our relationships and see how infected they are with self-love? to see where we put our interests and comforts before the needs of others and the commands of Almighty God. Married love is the highest form of love between people in this life, and the marital act between a husband and wife is meant to reflect the love of God, which is completely selfless and always life-giving. Our Lord on the cross gave himself completely for his bride, the church, and in offering his body in sacrifice, He purchased a new and everlasting life for us all. The church explains for us rightly and wisely that this marital act is only selfless and truly reflective of the love of Christ when its purposes of uniting the couple and of sharing in God's creative power are maintained. So if either husband or wife deliberately sterilizes himself either through a surgical operation or temporarily through contraception like the pill or IUDs, they gravely disorder God's plan for the marital act because it's no longer an act of total self-giving love. It no longer reflects the sacrificial love of Christ on the cross, giving himself totally and bestowing life in this very act of love. Sterilization has always existed and the church has always warned her flock against it. Because to deliberately sterilize a marriage, whether temporarily or permanently, dramatically alters a marriage relationship. Sterilization introduces a selfishness into the very heart of marital life. It rejects the will of God. It removes any cooperating with God's creative power, the great dignity which ennobled the marriage from mere animal union in the first place. It closes the couple in on themselves. In doing this, the marriage no longer faithfully reflects the love of Almighty God, which is intrinsically life-giving and totally selfless. Because of the seriousness of this, this rejection of God's will, deliberate sterilization, whether permanent or temporary, needs to be brought to the sacrament of confession because it is considered a mortal sin by the church, something which must be confessed and amended before receiving Holy Communion. Back in 1967, the Catholic Church presented this teaching very clearly in a document called Humane Vitae, and since then it has been repeated many times. For some reason, there is still much confusion surrounding the truth of the matter. 
So let me put it plainly. No Catholic can, in good conscience, use any artificial birth control, either chemical or mechanical. Even back in the 1930s, when the Protestant groups changed and began to tolerate sterilization, the Catholic Church warned that contraception would bring about a promiscuous culture, a hatred towards the unborn child, an explosion of civil divorces and the greater abuse and harm of women. Sadly for society, the church has proved to be right. Of course, it isn't always selfish to be uneasy about the prospect of having future children. And in rare occasions, due to poverty or potential medical complications, this might even be wise to be wary about the prospect of having more children. In these situations, couples still need to have reverence and wonder before the great creative power that God has entrusted them with. The gift of fertility must always be respected. And so children may only be spaced out or delayed through the use of natural means, which does not involve sterilization of any form. Unfortunately, in this short sermon, I can't do full justice to the subject, which possibly some of you may have never even considered before. Perhaps you are tempted to throw me off the mountain like the people of Nazareth in today's gospel when our Lord spoke to them in a way that was forthright and which made them uncomfortable. Take another look at St. Paul's words on love. He insists that love always delights in the truth. If you're uncomfortable with this teaching on the intrinsic evil of contraception, don't simply stop at uneasiness or hostility. Delight in the truth. And take some effort to try and find out why Christ teaches these truths about marriage and family life. A good starting point might be John Paul II's writings on the theology of the body. It was one of his life uh, missions to try and explain Humanae Vitae better. And he does that in his Theology of the Body Works. Another place you can look at is the encyclical by, by Pope Pius XI, Casti Canubii which is also a beautiful explanation of this area. St. Gianna Molla witnessed to the selfless love of married life by allowing her own life to be lost rather than harm her unborn baby. True love always entails sacrifice. Christ cries out from the cross, this is my body given for you. May our lives and our marriages be a total reflection of the selfless love of Christ, a love that doesn't count the cost a love that is life-giving, a love which never ends. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.